Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Going to do another comparison today. Going to stack up Olive Video Editor against KDEN Live. We've done a lot of touching on KDEN Live recently, so I wanted to stack it up against something that's kind of similar in a lot of ways, and let's see where we end up. Let's do it. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If it's your first time joining in, I'm really happy about that, by the way. But we do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them. Simple, right? So uh, again, I wanted to dig into Olive and Kden Live and do some comparison and just kind of see where that takes us because there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of asking about Olive and, and especially when I ask questions of of all of you, you know, what, what do you use? And I see this mentioned uh, quite often. So I wanted to see for myself and show you kind of how they stack up with, uh, in this case, Kaden Live. And uh, let's take a look around. So this is looking at Olive right now. It might feel on the surface uh, very similar as it is to Kaden Live. And what I'm going to try to do here somewhat on the fly is see if I can actually take off myself. There we go. So you can kind of see the full picture. And the layout's a little bit different. There's a toolbar here, which is actually very akin to Premiere Pro, if, if you're familiar with that. Um, so that may be more familiar to you to have this kind of toolbar with the razor cutter and the selector tool and those various kind of things. That might be uh, very convenient if you're looking for an open source solution uh, to compare to Premiere Pro. Um, it does have some similar capabilities that we've talked about with other editors where it's very easy to edit. I can right click, I can do a, a split or a cut right on the fly and we can move that footage around and we can do some very creative stuff with that. Um, it has very easy and convenient audio control. The M is for mute. The L is for mute. Just in case. <laughs> Too of a trick. Actually took me a playing to figure that out, but that's what they are. Um, the repertoire in Olive Editor is, is a little basic, I'll say. And to be fair, this is an alpha. It is not a full release. It is is something that is still kind of being cultivated as we go. And you might ask the question, well, then Nate, why, why are you bothering to do this? Well, mostly because there's a lot of interest and I just, I'd like you to know that it exists and you can try this out if you like. Again, there are some similarities for Premiere Pro and it might be an easier transition for you. So that's kind of the, the basics of why I'm, I'm dipping into this now. So we have those other things. Some intriguing prospects here are that as I select a clip, it does have a node editor interface, which right now I could not find that it really does anything special because again, it's still being developed, but this is a very popular compositing interface right now where you can interact with the different layers and rearrange them in kind of a dynamic, almost Visio type of interface, which is really kind of cool. They use the same kind of technology in Natron, if you're familiar with that. And if you're not familiar, I would invite you to go check that out and uh, see how that is so you can get a better sense of that. But it's here, and this, this is a cool idea that I'm kind of curious to watch and see what happens because it does have good possibilities for compositing. Um, I don't see a lot of that in Kden Live. Um, that's what makes this very interesting to see here that they, they're building that out. Again, it doesn't work right now, at least not that I can find, um, but it's being developed. So that's an interesting thing to keep your eyes on. Um, it does have some basic transitional support. Um, it has a special tool for it, which again is very similar to the kind of premier way of doing things. If we're going to do a dissolve, we can build that in very simply. And we have a cross dissolve between clips here. So uh, that's pretty straightforward. A lot of these other tools you can figure out just by doing the typical hover and, and use them. Razor is for making cuts. That's very straightforward. So the, in, the design is intuitive. It, it really isn't hard to figure out how to use what's there. What I would say is again that because this is an alpha, it's not quite so feature rich, which, which might be a good thing again to start. The interface is familiar to other things that you may have already used, 
and it doesn't look over bloated when you try to bring it up. It doesn't look overwhelming uh, when you try to use it. So I, I like that about tools. Um, that's why I harp on paint.net a lot is that the interface and the, the, the built-in features coming out of the box are very simple. So it forces you as an artist, as a creator to think in, in simple terms, and it really forces, I think, the best output in a lot of ways. Now, advanced tools do have their place. I'm not going to downplay all of that because you can do some amazing things with, with a lot of these tools that have come out. But it's also good, I think, to focus on basics, make it sharp, and then you enhance from there. I, I think it's a mistake to come out of the gate expecting to do much, um, especially coming into a tool that you may not be familiar with. So for what it's worth, that is, that is olive, and I, I think it's off to a great start. Looking at this in KDEM Live again, we've touched on this again, so there are other videos. I won't spend so much time on it except to compare uh, with, with Olive here uh, in that the layout has kind of a very similar feel to what the, the dockets are arranged slightly differently. But again, the editing feel and, and features are very intuitive to figure out. It has that same kind of interface here where you can either lock things or mute things and lock them. Um, they're just different icons. So it's all still here. Same basic concepts. I can right click right on the timeline interface and we can do a cut in this case. And we can do the same kind of click and drag editing, which is really cool. Um, where it does kind of branch off from um, Olive a bit here. I left the frame on there, sorry about that is that it does have a lot more built into it with the kinds of effects and things you can do. You actually can do some very cool animation compositing type things as it is without the, uh, the node editor. Uh, to give you an example, let's see if I just make a smaller clip here and we're gonna work on this and I'm going to insert a transform and then right over here, and again, I've, I've touched on this in the past here, but it's really easy to make adjustments um, and to work with that. If I wanted to uh, to do more with this, there's this interface over here, uh, which is the timeline. And you may be familiar with this again with kind of the Premiere Pro or After Effects look on things uh, where you have your layout of that clip that we're looking at from this cut to this cut. And we can make keyframes and actually make animation with that. So if I go to the end, I can either drag this around if I want to be sure I'm at the end. I can add a keyframe, and then with that, let's just say, okay, well, I really want that to go back where it was. So for you to see what actually happened there, very simply, is that now we have something that will animate. And it's a little jumpy because, again, we're doing this in real time. But you can see how we just created a basic 2D animation effect right here in the interface here. It was pretty cool. So that has a bit more development. And to be fair, this this has, I'm going to go with a much larger team behind it uh, working on this. So this tool has been around longer. It, ha it has had a wider audience in it. And I do think that's worked to its benefit to really build this about and mature it. Because um, this is not the first release. I think it's on release 20 something. Yep, 20.08.1. So yeah, there's been a lot more development on this and then there's not really a totally equal comparison there, but this is where both products are right now in this snapshot in time. And you can kind of see which one is, is a little bit more feature rich. Also, it does have some really cool things in here where you can do chroma keying. Uh, you can do a lot of different transition types. There's color correction. Some of those things I do anticipate will be coming in olive, uh, again, for transparency here. They do promise they're going to build out their node compositing. They do promise they're going to work on color management. Those things are not there yet, but it's coming. So it's interesting to keep an eye on that stuff and, and see where it goes. And that's really kind of uh, the one-to-one -one comparison. Uh, both will export in high definition. Uh, both work fairly seamlessly. You can drag clips into it and they seem pretty format friendly. I haven't noticed any major issues there. Um, and again, the initial reaction to starting to use it and just figuring things out, I found really easy. I did not have a difficult time just jumping into it and understanding what I was trying to do, even kind of guessing my way through some things. So um, I'd encourage you to try these out. Um, if you've used Kden Live, uh, even try out Olive just as, a, as another alternative as they develop it because there's some exciting things coming about. So uh, 
Yep, I hope that is eye-opening and uh, gives you something to watch out for and be excited with in the community as we go. If this was helpful, please do consider giving me a thumbs up because that lets me know that this resonated with you and it's a topic that we can explore more and more and build out on the uh, similar ideas. Um, consider leaving me a comment because I love it when people get in the conversation and not just for me but for the entire community so we can help each other grow and lastly consider subscribing so you don't miss out on what's coming up ahead thank you so much for spending your time with me on this and i hope it was informative and interesting and i'll see you in the next video take care and as with other videos consider watching one of those they're both good they're great